I like to help you, to help you. You are in the church, don't be on the phone. The few hours we have together, concentrate so that you can hear something. All right, don't be on the phone. If you want to be on the phone, go home. If you want to be here, be here. Because already, human mind does not have the capacity to comprehend everything being said. I think psychologists told us that things have to be said about 21 times before you actually fully understand them. That's why if any message is preached, you might think you heard what the preacher said until when you go back to the message. Let now assume that you do not have maximum concentration. Then there's a trouble. It's a wasted time. All right? Uh, Paul told us to redeem the time for the days are evil. To us, it doesn't seem so. Only as age climbs over age and times pass away that we just discover, oh, who I wanted to be, I've not been. Because everything you want to be in life, time is exchanged for it. That's why you've got to be intentional about what your time is used for. When you want to sleep, sleep. Shut down your phone, sleep. I do not know how many times in a day that my phone is on flight mode, not because I'm flying. Some other time is totally shut down. It takes a stupid person for your phone to be on 24 seven, except you are into phone business. That people are borrowing phone, or your own is a, you are a sales rep, and people have to talk that, that your job is on the phone. Outside of that, outside of that, it is not possible to really grow maximumly in any aspect of life when you don't have certain moment that nobody else can reach you except you and God. I don't care how many children you have. Such moment is needed. Otherwise, you will be weak and exploited. The Bible says the people who do know their God is be strong and do exploit. Your phone cannot be on. I don't even care if you have to monitor your children, monitor this. After some time, they will put monitor in your own arm. If you are the only one monitoring children, monitor, they will be monitor, you know, at monitor, will be in your own arm because you will have BP. I try a bit, you can see, and sometimes I'll be distracted because I'm fixated on my family, even as we're in the church. Because all of you bear your father's name. And there are people who bear Olayinka. And it's going to be permanent Olayinka. And I've got to be careful. <laughs> they are my first church. They are my first church. All right, before any other church. If their life is not okay, you won't want to be in this church. <laughs> That's what the Bible says about those to be ordained as deacons or bishops. He said they must have a one wife, they must be husband and one wife, that their family, they, they rule their home very well, and their family is well subject to them. Anything outside of that, he said, don't go to that church. That's what he said. He said, don't go to that church, they, because they will mislead their own family. But as much as I want to do that, I am not the shepherd of my family. It's God. So I look to my children, my wife, a bit, a bukun, a bit. After some time, I take my wife off, or my eyes off because I won't be able to preach. Sometimes when they are with me, I just want to be with them 24-7. Close your mouth, do this, do that, do that. After some time, I begin to feel pains in my shoulders. Even me, myself, now need somebody to take care of me now. Before they will use wheelchair to wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow or, or that thing to wheel me out <laughs> of the whatever. So from time to time, I just tell myself, I need to sleep. God, watch over them now. I, I, I just tell God, I've tried. I'm a human being also. <laughs> I'm actually a human being. Sometimes when I want to travel, it's very tough for me. I don't want to be away from my children for one second. Especially at this tender age, until they are teenagers. And where I travel, wherever I travel to, I'll be calling my wife. If she does not pick, I call somebody else. I say, where are the children? They are watching now. They are I've always told you will just leave them to watch. I'm controlling things from wherever, even on flight. I'm 30, 39,000 above the sea level, and I'm texting my wife. What do you think the children are doing now? What do you think the children are doing? 
I came back yesterday tired, and I was in the office here, still attending to some meeting because I came in here around 8.30 from Switzerland. And in the midst of that, I started calling my wife. I said, what are they doing? What are they? That's, that's the way I am. But even then, let me tell you, I take my time off that I'm totally off. Totally off. Only me and God. I do me alone time with God. If you don't, you won't be strong if you don't know how to do that. You won't be strong. In returning and rest shall you be saved. That's Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. In returning and rest shall you be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. If you see somebody who is always rowdy, the phone is always on. They're always on phone for one thing or the other. They will soon die. They will soon die. First, spiritually. Second, their mind will die. Number three, their physical body will die. Sometimes I'm driving and my phone is off so that nobody can reach me. Because there is, human beings don't know what time not to reach somebody. Once they need you. As soon as I'm finished preaching now, don't you see the way all of you do? People are not even thinking that this guy must have expended some strength. Let us give him tea. Everybody just wants to talk to me immediately. And I'm gasping for breath. That's why sometimes I just stay on the altar here. Because there is no privacy. I don't want you to come. I just stay here. I just, this chair, I just sit down here. And anybody that wants to give me tea, okay, bring the tea here. Bring the tea here. If you want to talk to me, I say, come here, come here. Everybody will be hearing us. It's up to you. I'm not going to that office where you're going to lock me. <laughs> Everybody, can I see you for one minute? How can it be one minute? It's no, it's no. You know it's no one minute. And when you come to the church, let me just borrow you a leave. Don't stay on the phone. You look stupid to the angels of God. It's true. Me, if I'm talking to you, you're on your phone. I know you don't want to hear me. So I shut up my dirty mouth. Because you don't want to hear why will I be wasting my words? I used to do that before. Just wasting my words and say, yeah, you need to leave. I don't have that power anymore and I don't want to have it. I don't. Because I've discovered the sweetest part of life. The sweetest part of life is to let people run on their own opinion. When the steam is finished, they cannot come back to you. Once they are not children, either spiritually or physically, but there are some people who, even spiritually, they remain children forever. They ask God every question. They ask their pastor every question. They are highly intelligent. You can know. But they ask their pastor every single question. Even the pastor is surprised. Sometimes some people bring some questions and say, I say, you should know what to do about that. I say, no, I want to know from you. What do you say? That's when I will now go to God as a child. I say, he's asking, what do you say? And God said, that's the permanent place to live. Even you as a pastor, that's the permanent place to live. I don't come here. There is no day I come here with a prepared message except asking the Lord. And somebody will ask me, how do you know he spoke to you? If I speak to him, he also speaks. He's not deaf and dumb, actually. No. If he created me in his image and his likeness and I talk, he talks. He now has many ways he talks, but he talks and I know that he talks. So I just tell him, what will I say to these people that are coming? All of a sudden, me that I'm tired, before I want to talk to you, as soon as I see you, an idea just pops into my head. And I begin to prosecute that idea. Oh, and it booms. So I know he speaks because he has several ways through which he speaks. So I talk to him. But in any case, whether he's going to speak or not, it is my responsibility to ask him, what should I say? Some people say, even if I ask him, he's not going to talk. Don't be stupid. He <laughs> just talk. It's by faith we walk with God. It's not by sight. There's no day it's going to come physically and say, I'm here now, let us come and talk and sit down physically. Even you will run. Sometimes when he appears to Daniel, Daniel just die. He said, I've died. He said, wake up. He said, people are asking for me. I've now come. He said, no, it's not like this. I didn't know you'd be this tall, 699 feet tall and huge. And you are, your voice, as you want to say, hello, it sounds like many waves of water. As a matter of fact, as you want to laugh, it sounds like lightning. The children of Israel told Moses, hey, tell him to talk. We didn't know. We thought that when he wants to talk, he will come and say, ah, are you? That's everything. No, he just, the Bible said the voice of the Lord thunders. He doesn't know how to come in there except through the focal cord of a prophet. When he talk, that's the reason why the best way God leads people is not personally. God is too big for you to lead you personally. 
you'll be misled. Because he wouldn't understand many things he said. When he came to Samuel, and he began to call Samuel, Samuel said, Daddy, you are calling me. He went to say, Eli, Daddy, you are calling and God will shut up. Samuel, Samuel, and he will go to Eli. Eli is not the one who said, Your man, it is God that is calling you. Just say, Yes, Lord, thy servant hear it. It was after that that God continued to talk. Sometimes I just get baffled in the Bible. I say, But what's all these protocols? If you want to talk to someone else, he's running to Eli. You just say, I am the one, don't run to Eli. Why do you have to be disturbing him to be running to Eli? God said, because man will not listen to me except there's a man to direct them. You know you will not drive well except there's a policeman on the road. Even though God is on the road. <laughs> you, go, you know God is on the road. And sometimes I just come out of the car to we, like the way we do in Africa. And I will be fine. I will even be waving to everybody going, hey, because I've just enjoyed myself. I'm not a kubiku. You know, you know, because toilet looks like a kubiku to me sometimes. It just looks as, as if somebody put me in a prison. <laughs> That's why sometimes, you, have you seen me using our toilet? I don't close the door. You will come, you just meet me there. <laughs> it's not that maybe I don't want to close. I just say, but who is putting me in a prison? Why? What did I do? <laughs> That's, that's the way. Sometimes I don't want the light. Some people just come and just want the light for me. I say, who are you? Where are you? <laughs> and you won't believe it. Beside us, there's a booth. That's where I actually go and we. I just come to the door here. I just see somebody. Is there. You just see me go downstairs. You think I went to pray. No, I just go. And I enjoy myself. So I used to do it on the road until one police came. He just say, what are you doing? He said, woman. He said, what are you doing there? I said, we, of course. He said, we're going to charge you. <laughs> From that day, I changed you. I said, I don't know it's a chargeable offense. <laughs> God knows you can't listen to him except through the instrumentality of a man. Because God doesn't have a, a hand to punch human being. But he asked Mike Tyson, some of you that like to beat your wife. And he said, what will you do? He said, I, I, I hand you over to God. It, it's, too, it's too long. It's a long matter. They need one Mike Tyson in each community. One Mike Tyson, that if husband is fighting you and he wants to be a boxer, he just bring Anthony Joshua, Mike Tyson, dubious, just bring them. He said, my husband just learn boxing tricks and his, his, his body is itching him, want to know how to use it. By the time Mike Tyson enters your house, I am sure the next three months you are never going to raise your voice against your wife. Isn't it true? My dad, he just, he just put your hair and said, the next time, the next time, I'm going to get light out of you. I say, Brother Mike Tyson, <laughs> it's by, you, African man, it's by yourself, you call him Brother Mike Tyson. In America, they just start calling Mike. You yourself, you say, it's too heavy for me. I can't go, Brother Mike Tyson, it's not like that. He, he provoked me. He, he brought the devil out of me. Mike Tyson said, that's, that's what I'm coming for. I'm coming for that devil. You know, <laughs> the next time. Anytime your wife now provokes you, because my, if it is God who talks, say, you this man, if you touch your wife again, there's nothing I will not do to you. you say, God, God will forgive me. But if Mike Tyson said the next time, anytime your wife now offend you, now you take your clothes, you go out of the house. Because of Mike Tyson, God knows what he's doing. So are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you listening to what I'm saying? So God turned us, and the children of Israel told God, told Moses, go and listen to God. Don't let, when you finish, Come and talk it to us. Because God is too big to lead. Write it down, God is too big to lead you. But you see, he's too big to lead you. He's too big to lead you. I met with a guy on the, you know I'm always preaching. I can't. I can't do without preaching. It's the only way to defend yourself. The guy, I met with a guy on the plane. Too beautiful not to preach to. Because if you don't preach to the guy, you might approach the guy for relationship. You never know. I've always used the gospel as a defense. Where are you back? I've always used the gospel as a defense. Some of you, you let them seduce you, and then you don't know, the gospel cannot come out anymore. Instead of just preaching as soon as you see the person, start preaching. Jesus is Lord. Let them see you as weird, as a weirdo, so that you can escape. But you, you, you yourself, you're not putting perfume on your mouth, and the person has oh, well, you do you want some chicken? Then you cannot now say Jesus is Lord anymore. You forget <laughs> No, me, I just pre I was preaching to the person and I discovered, I said, I'm a Christian. He said, Brazilian, very impeccable beauty. Drop dead beauty. 
She didn't even know she was going to be sitting around me because I got to the airport and I was asking her, where is uh, D41? She was even doing that. But eventually she now had to come and sit beside me. And I had a lot of food and I was sharing with her to eat. She didn't have money to buy food with all the beauty. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as you took my food and I said, my food cannot be wasted. Impossible. Impossible. You must hear the gospel. So and I say, how are you? I is everything. Uh, what's your name? I'm a pastor. That's when I, uh, that's the way to start. I am a pastor, a weirdo, a priest. <laughs> you just need to know that. It's the way, all of you young guys, it's the way to deliver yourself. Be a weirdo and God will defend you. You don't have to behave like your pure funky person. Very soon, you, you'll be a boy, girlfriend of a smoker. I'm telling you. That's how I deliver myself from young age. After getting born again, I just preach the gospel. They just see me as a weirdo. As somebody say, some of those people with knocked head, you know. Say, before you say that, if I now preach and it's not enough, I sat beside that guy and I pray in tongues for about one hour. I put my mouth down there. For one hour. Yes. Enjoy my life. So that, he said, what is he saying? He said, if I now say, I like you, he said, no. It's not. <laughs> it's not somebody like you. And I discover that the guy... He's from Brazil, and he knows, he knows the Lord, but he said, I don't go to church, churches, weird, whatever. I said, let me tell you what will happen to you. Your faith will die. Without pastors, without churches, he stay alone. Your faith will die. There is no lawyer that can be strong alone without being in the association of lawyers. All of you know that factual learning is not as stimulating and it's not as exciting as... Being in the classroom. Being in the classroom can never be faced out. Because you are not actually learning. You are just hearing. If only you are doing virtual learning. Only when you are in the midst of other people. There are so many things that just being in the group, in the hub, makes you to learn. Than just staying in front. As a matter of how many of the time in front of your computer, have you not slept off? More than 60% of my time on the computer on virtual learning, I'm talking to people. Everybody calling me. But if I'm in the class, how do you bring me out to come and talk to me? But I see important call. And I'm just texting them. And then, then you just switch, switch off your own camera. From, from Zoom. Nobody knows where you are. Are you listening to what I'm saying? In the same way, your faith cannot really grow. Except you are being pastored and you are in a church. It is the truth. I don't care how big you are. You're going to lose. You're going to fail. Because we are two or three are gathered together as a church. Jesus said that's where I am. It doesn't mean it's not in the inside, on the inside of you. But it's another level entirely. As you feel people, even if you're sorrowful, as you see people dancing, and are dancing, all of a sudden you just tell yourself, I think the reason for my being sorrowful is evil spirit. Because you can see everybody is dancing. So before you say Jack... You don't know when your body is moving. Because majority, their body is moving. So that you don't be the only witch of Endor. <laughs> in the midst of everybody. 